Welcome to the Etsy Entrepreneur Podcast, where sellers can get help starting, building, and growing their Etsy business so that they can make extra money pursuing their passion. Are you ready to get the tips and strategies you need to be successful? Then let's get started. Here is your host, a top 1% full-time Etsy seller, LL. Hey guys, what is up? Welcome back to the podcast. As always, I'm super excited to have you guys. Thanks for listening. I really try my best to give you guys as much actionable strategies and whatever knowledge that has helped me, I really want to make sure that I'm doing whatever I can to convey that to you and uh, keep it fresh and exciting. So hopefully you guys are getting a lot out of these podcasts, but I just wanted to take a quick moment to thank you guys first and foremost. Uh, The responses, the reviews that you've been leaving, the feedback that you've given me so far have been amazing and I'm super fortunate um, to have you guys as listeners. So the other thing I want to talk about this week uh, when I'm recording this is daylight saving time or savings time. I looked it up in both ways. Uh, is appropriate to say it so (laughs) um, whatever you however you say that guys uh, I'm doing something special in honor of getting well actually I guess we're losing an hour but daylight is extended which is awesome I know if you're like me you get a lot more uh, things done as long as it's daylight out Um, as soon as it gets dark you really uh, don't want to do a hot whole lot uh, extra stuff but in honor of that I'm giving you guys a dollar trial access to my Etsy traffic and sales masterclass with over a dozen modules in there showing you exactly how to uh, grow your Etsy shop, all the strategies. Um, I'm constantly updating that too. So there's new videos in there and new modules in there usually every month. And I got a, I got a laundry list of new ones that I'm going to be putting out. Uh, so you can get access to that for a dollar as well as the uh, help form and community community you can work with me directly one-on-one ask me questions see everyone else's questions and responses in there Um, ask me for feedback critiques whatever you guys need help with it is a real game changer to work with me one-on-one in the community and just have that support the last thing I'm throwing in along with that um, is you get a PDF copy of my brand new Etsy SEO revealed ebook with all the latest strategies that are working as far as SEO best practices and and things just to help your shops traffic and sales that is the ultimate goal so I broke it out in there Um, you can get access to that PDF ebook uh, as well for only a dollar which is insane Um, but I want you guys to have the easiest way possible to move your business forward. So hop in there, you get a trial for 30 day trial for a dollar. Um, you know, after that it is a low cost. It's only $29.99 if you want to continue. But like I said, I'm constantly updating it and putting stuff in there. So I would love to see you guys in there. All right. So moving forward, I just wanted to mention that, and there is a link in the, the show notes, wherever you're watching this or listening, if you scroll down, there is a link for that dollar trial. It ends Sunday. Don't miss out. I want to see you guys in there. I want to help you. I want to blow up your shop with you in a good way. So I want to see you in there. Today's episode is going to be about setting your Etsy shop up for success. All right. So a lot of people, when they set their Etsy shops up or they're thinking about setting their Etsy shops up, um, they don't really put a lot of thought into it or just kind of do it haphazardly. Um, So I want to make sure that you guys are thinking this through and setting your shop up for success if you already have your shop set up that's fine go back and kind of revisit it uh, and just make sure that you have this stuff uh, in order um, so that you can can have the best uh, chance for success you know that's what we all want you guys uh, I'm sure you enjoy making your stuff creating your stuff but if no one buys it the fun dwindles very fast and it, it doesn't become as fun. So, uh, but you do have to give it time. It's not going to be an overnight thing. A lot of people don't realize that as well. Um, so let's dive right in. Um, I'm going to go through these, uh, some tips and some best practices when you're, when I'm talking about sh- setting up your Etsy shop. Okay. And if you're watching on the video version of this, you can kind of see, I have a sample shop pulled up. Either way, I'm going to explain it fine so you don't actually have to watch it. Listening uh, is is going to be working, uh, will work uh, just as well. So the first thing I want to touch on is uh, 
your shop name, right? I get a lot of questions about your shop name uh, and in regard to, you know, depending on what you're selling. So what I mean is a lot of people and a lot of creators um, aren't interested in just creating one item. Uh, they're interested in maybe creating multiple items or have multiple items, which may or may not be related. You know, maybe they ha they sell leather wallets and furniture, or maybe they make art and bracelets or soaps and decorative items. You know, those things aren't really that related. Um, so then the question becomes, what should my shop name be? Should I have two shops? Because these are items are not really related. So the way I like to approach it and, and kind of talk to sellers about it is when you're setting up your shop, I would recommend doing only one shop to start. Um, it, just because it's easier to manage and it's not as overwhelming. When you have a couple shops, it becomes a lot more overwhelming and you usually uh, don't focus on all of them the same way. So you can make one shop work if your branding uh, is appropriate for your items. So the, the easiest way to do that is to make a broader brand. So you wouldn't want to say, if you sell leather, let's say you sell leather wallets and uh, bracelets, you wouldn't want to make your shop name related to leather wallets or bracelets. Like your name wouldn't be Emily's bracelets or, um, you know, David's leather, leather works or something like that, because that is specific to those products. So when people come to your page and they see bracelets is not going to make a whole heck of a lot of sense. The branding is going to be off while it could still work. And it's, you know, not a huge, huge deal. Um, I think it's better to kind of set yourself up, up for success where the branding makes sense. Uh, and it's less confusing. So you would just broaden out your branding and maybe you brand your shop as yourself. Um, you know, where it works that way, you know, maybe it's, you know, Emily's creations or, um, Emily's boutique or something like that, where it is broader. So you could put different items in there and it still makes sense because you're the one creating them or, uh, you know, it doesn't even have to be your name. If you want to use whatever, uh, name in there, uh, it would still work if you kind of broaden out. So take a step back and, and broaden out your name. Um, and then it would work with your variations of products as long as it, it still makes sense. So just keep that in mind when you're setting up your shop. Uh, if you do want to do two different shops, uh, that's fine as well. Uh, if you are putting everything under a broader brand, um, you know, it gives you an opportunity to test items as well. You know, maybe you create two or three different products and each of those products has a bunch of different variations. Well, maybe two or three do really well and the third doesn't do well at all. Well, it's easy. You can just, you know, cut those products off and no one will know any different because it's under a broad brand. Whereas if you have three shops, you would just have, you would have to close one shop, which is kind of the same thing. However, you were probably spending a lot more time managing three shops and jumping back and forth in three shops, uh, rather than just doing everything in one shop. So just keep that in mind. At the end of the day, it's whatever works for you and your business. Um, I get a lot of questions about it, so I just, just wanted to make sure that I touched on that as far as your name. Don't overthink it. It's not a huge deal. You can always change your name later. Um, so it's, you know, it's not like you can't go back and kind of revisit that later on. The next thing I want to talk about, talk about is uh, your your banner and logo image. All right, so your banner image goes across the very top of your shop and your logo image is the small square image um, that is at the top of your shop as well. Both are important and you will see shops without either. Um, that is a big mistake. Um, you want to make sure that you have something there um, just because it adds a professional element to your shop. Um, so I'm sure you've all, you've all been driving on, you know, down the road and you've seen the, maybe the, the generic pizza shop where it just says pizza or uh, generic, uh, Chinese food shop, or just says you know, Chinese and it's not branded at all. Um, it probably doesn't make you really want to stop in there and try those places just because it's, it doesn't feel like anything special. It doesn't give you a reason, um, to want to go in there. You know, it, there's nothing 
uh, fantastic about it. You know, it just looks super generic. Um, so that's kind of the feel that you're giving your, um, you're giving your buyers, the people coming to your shop, if you have nothing there or stuff that's super generic looking. So just spend a little bit of time to create something that, well, first of all, to create something. Second of all, try and create something that's not generic. Um, your banner image is really easy. It can literally be your best selling product or a couple of your products put together and uh, just take a picture of that where maybe it look, the lighting's good, it looks nice. Um, there's some decorations, depending on what you're selling. Um, that's it, that's all that, you know, that would be a good banner image. Your logo, that can be simple too. It doesn't have to be anything crazy and it doesn't have to be your full name. Um, you know, maybe your name is abbreviated. Um, you know, maybe if it's Emily's Creations, you could just use an E and a C and make a nice logo uh, with those put together. Um, it doesn't, you don't have to ha necessarily have any um, graphics in there. You know, you can use just letters in a, a decorative way and a different font way. Um, so just kind of think about it like that. Don't overthink of, think it. There's a lot of templates online um, that you can use to help you create a logo. Um, you can go to, there's canva.com, which um, you can create your own stuff pretty easily and it's free. Uh, you can hire someone to do it for five bucks on Fiverr.com, F-I-V-E-R-R.com. Um, so five bucks, you can get a professionally created logo. Um, I would say it is important for your for long term to to kind of set yourself up for success with your logo and your branding and stuff like that. Um, but if you're just starting out, you know, put something up there. Um, doesn't have to be perfect. You can always upgrade that stuff later on. All right. It's not, it shouldn't keep you from opening your shop. I, I, I see a lot of sellers. They find reasons not to open their shop. Um, and it, it's stuff that doesn't make sense. That's super simple stuff, but make sure you guys have it so that it just, it will, it will help your shop. It'll help the, uh, professionalism of your shop. Uh, the next thing, uh, and this is a big mistake people make too. When you scroll down, you'll see an announcement section uh, in your shop. Use that for quick, you know, quick announcements. Um, you, you don't want to put a biography in there and about me in there. Um, this is just a quick, uh, quick announcement section per the name. <laughs> so uh, you can put shipping deadlines if there's a holiday coming up. You know, you would want to put a shipping deadline in there. You know, all orders must be received before this date. Um, to be delivered in time, or maybe if you're on a sale or um, something like that. If you don't have much, just you know, it could be a simple, "Hey, welcome to my shop. Um, thanks for thanks for stopping by, or thanks for visiting." Um, something like that, super quick. So, um, the next thing that you guys, when you scroll down uh, further down your shop, the the big one is the about me section. All right, so this is your chance to really set yourself apart from the other shops out there. Um, it should be a couple paragraphs. You can add photos. If you add photos, it should be kind of behind the scenes. Maybe you making your stuff or your items be, being created, uh, your items being packaged, uh, anything like that. But just take the time to tell people why you started your shop. You know, what do you, uh, what do you enjoy about doing your shop? You know, a little bit about your shop, maybe about your, your products, maybe, about how it's made, um, stuff like that. It should be positive. It should be uplifting. It should be um, very uh, conversational. Uh, the mistakes that people make, I see people make in there, uh, sometimes they get um, very negative. Um, you know, talking about, I've seen about me sections where they talk about other shops um, and it's just super negative and you know, it feels like you're being attacked and that is a huge, huge no, no. Uh, so just make it positive and uplifting and, uh, just a quick background of, you know, about your shop and about your store. People like that. Um, Etsy buyers like to connect, uh, with the sellers. Um, and that's why one of the reasons why they come to Etsy, otherwise they would just go to Amazon or a big box store or something like that. They like the handmade feel, the really, the, the, personalized attention when it comes to their products being made and they really feel good about that. Um, so they may want to know a little bit more about you and uh, about how you got started and then they will form a connection with you and probably buy from you again uh, if you do, do a good job of uh, 
connecting with them and explaining it. And also obviously a good job of making your products um, and, you know, have high quality products, which is uh, a no brainer. That is always important as well. Um, the next thing, as far as shop sections, you guys want to make sure to set up is if you have a uh, Facebook, Instagram, uh, Pinterest, or a website, make sure you guys put that in there so people can pop over and check you out there. Um, if you don't have any of that stuff, not a big deal. I would recommend down the road at least setting up some type of so social media for your business. Um, that's kind of another tip too. Make sure you have a business social media. Don't put your personalized one on there. Um, just because it helps separate everything out. Uh, you don't want your buyers um, really seeing your personal business. So it's really easy to set up a business page for Facebook or Instagram or Pinterest. Um, those are super, super easy for you to do. Um, a website, you know, Etsy has a pattern which makes it easy to create a website. It basically just transfers everything in your Etsy shop over to the pattern shop and then you can buy a URL, whatever URL you wanna buy. Um, just makes it easy to manage a website and Etsy um, kind of all in one if you're thinking about doing that. But make sure you guys put that in there uh, so people can check you out around the web. Um, the shop members section is next. And this is where you want to put um, yourself and any people that help you with your shop down. Uh, it can be super simple, just your your name and, you know, your status. You know, are you the owner, you know, the CEO whatever. And then if someone helps you, what do they help you with? You know, are they help, are they a creator, uh, um, packaging, whatever it, whatever their title is or the title that you want to give them, put it in there so they can see it. Um, people can, you know, know that you're a real person with uh, real people helping you. Even if it's yourself, that is totally fine. Um, so you can, you can do that as well. Uh, with my shop, I have, you know, I have, two people in there and then I also have my dogs in there as well and I uh, just had some funny blurbs about them as well just kind of keep it light um, so whatever you guys want to do uh, in there I would just at least make sure you have yourself and you could put as much or as little information in there um, you know like I said your your title and your name is fine if you want to put a little sentence in there um, you can do that as well some people have paragraphs in there um, about all the people that they help out with their shops it can be lighthearted. it can be funny um, kind of make it your own there, but make sure that you guys have that filled out. Uh, I think it just helps to add, you know, like I said, professionalism and it just makes people feel like you're a real person as well. So, uh, the last thing I want to talk about as far as shop sections is your shop policy section. Uh, this is a big one to make sure that you have filled in. Um, people want to know, you know, what are your shipping policies? What are your return policies and anything else uh, that is important as far as your policies with what you're selling? Etsy has made it much easier now. They have a default policy section. So you literally just go in there and activate it um, if you wanna use their policies uh, or you activate it and then edit it to kind of change it to your policies and make it your own. But it's all already pre-populated. You just have to, have to activate it. So maybe you wanna, uh, upgrade your shipping times or the return policy, um, stuff like that. Um, but I would definitely, definitely make sure that you guys have a shop policy section because people want to know these things. And if you don't have a policy section, uh, people are not going to want to buy from you because they don't know your policies and they're gonna, not going to want to reach out and ask you, hey, can I return this if I don't like it or it doesn't fit or whatever the case may be. So that is a real big one. You need to make sure they put that in there. Um, and have it updated. So you can check out other shops. You know, every most shops that are successful have a policy second section. You can kind of see what they're doing as far as the policies go and then do what's best for your shop, whatever makes sense. You don't have to do the exact same thing, um, but a lot of the shop policies and shops have similar policies. So just take the time to do it. It doesn't take a lot of time at all. Um, so that includes... Uh, you know, shipping, uh, payment options, uh, returns and exchanges, which is a big one. Um, so those need to all be updated in there. Um, and then I almost forgot one. Uh, there is another se section that you guys can fill out. It's the, the frequently asked questions section. 
So this is good. Um, you should ask these, or you should put those in your listings as well. But if you have generalized, frequently asked questions you can put that helps people out, um, make sure to put them here too. Uh, just because, and I always, you probably have heard me say this before, but the more questions that people have that you don't answer in your FAQs or in your listings, chances are they're gonna move on and not buy from you. They're not gonna take the time to reach out to you because they have no idea how quick uh, you're gonna respond back to them. Even if you do respond quick, they don't know that. They're gonna assume that maybe you don't and they're gonna go to a, find another shop that has their question answered or it's a little bit clearer and then buy from them. So you don't wanna have that happen. You wanna try and cover all your bases up front, keep those people on your, on your uh, Etsy shop and get them to buy from you get all their questions uh, answered so take the time to do that if you can um, if there's important stuff that you guys need to cover but those are the main things uh, that you guys need to make sure that you have with your shop section so don't cut corners make sure they're filled out uh, make sure all your shop sections are filled out like I said they don't have to be perfect and uh, you know, even my stuff's not perfect. You can go back and change it, update it, um, which you should be doing any, anyhow. Things change, so you wanna make sure you're uh, keeping things relevant. Um, so you can go back and look at it every couple of months anyways and just make sure everything still makes sense with what you're doing, because um, you may pivot and not even realize it. So um, go in there and, and keep checking it, but that should set you guys up for success if you're getting that stuff all filled out. It'll add uh, professionalism to your shop. It'll uh, just make fe people feel warm and cozy about buying from you. Um, it really helps the trust factor. Uh, you know, if people come to you, they feel good about how everything's laid out. Um, you, they can tell that you spend a lot of time on your shop sections. It looks professional. They're gonna feel good about buying from you because they're gonna think that they're gonna getting a good product, product, high quality product um, from a great seller. Uh, so ease their mind, take a little bit of extra time and, and do those shop sections. Um, and I think it'll really go a long way for helping your shop be successful. But that's all I got for today. Uh, pretty short and sweet, but very, very important. Uh, hopefully it helps you guys out, set you up for future success. Um, because that is the ultimate goal of this podcast, to get you guys more traffic, get you guys more sales, get you guys more customers and uh, so you can create that extra money create that extra revenue uh, for whatever your goals are with Etsy we want to make it as worthwhile as possible for you so um, until next time guys I will talk to you later have an awesome rest of your day